Hi, I'm Dami from eLearning Channel Museum. How was your last lesson? Did you practice all the patterns that I taught you? Or did you pick just one? If it's one, which pattern do you like the most? Of course, the harder one is always better sound. Today, we're going to learn new patterns. One of the most important patterns, of course, inversions. You know what is inversion? We have learned from the previous lesson, like level two. If you don't remember, just go back once and watch this video and come back again. Today, I'm going to teach you how to play inversions in an easier way, like technique. And we're gonna learn songs with using this inversion. Let's see how it goes. What is inversion? Inversion is changing positions within a chord. So if it's a C chord, yes, E, G is a C chord, but there is a couple of ways to play it in C chord. We can play it C on the bottom and play it E, G, or we can move this C to above here. Yes, C, E, G, the same C, E, G, but in this position, as you see it, E is on the bottom, and C move to the top, very top of the note. This position we call first inversion, because inversion is changing position, so it's first changed. And then we write at this chord symbol in C slash E, means C chord, but bottom is on the E. Got it? Yes. What about the next position? Then the same way, we move this E to top here, the top above E. So C, E, G, same C, E, G. Still C position, C chord, but in G on the bottom. So this is the second inversion and we write it C slash G. Why? C chord, but bottom is on the C, right? Yes, and C becomes the middle of the chord. Then that's the second inversion. Then if we move G again above here, this is a C root position. Why? Because C is very bottom. So this is a C chord, root position, and C chord, first inversion, C slash E. C chord, second inversion, C slash G. And next is a C root position again. So this is, seems very simple, but used most often in the music. You have to remember this position. So if you see it in the score, you can recognize it right away. Oh, this is a C chord. Or if you see the symbols, you're supposed to know what to play it, okay? So now let's see how to play it. There is a certain fingerings for the chord. Basically the root position, we play it one, three, five. And first inversion, we use one, two, five. Some people use a three, but it's better to use a two. So switch it, okay? And the next finger is one, three, five. Some people use two or four, but it's better to use a three. So there is always fingering. One, two, three for root position. One, two, five for first inversion. And one, three, five for the second inversion, G slash, C slash G. Got it? And I will tell you the technique, how to play it, easier way to play the inversions. Now, first, the root position, you just play it, skip, 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 so it should be easy. The set, first inversion, when you play it, remember to hold it, these two down. So just move it like this, slightly move, one, two, and then the last thing is you just go four note above, then that's easier. So I, if I play it, I will show you. First, catch the, this two, and then drop the five. One more time. 
Remember these two by eyes. Hold it down and one, two, and then drop the five later. Got it? What about the second inversion? It's actually easier to do. Five skipping up and go three, five, and then drop the G. So do you remember from the two? Yeah, we're gonna play these two notes, right? Again, and then adding E, move this E. What we're gonna do? You can just skip the five and be ready for three, five. That's a skip, right? And then play a G. So if I play a slow motion, root position, C, one, two, and five, and three, five, and one. Do you get it? One more time. C, one, two, and five, three, five, and one. Yes. And if you go again, just C chord is easy to find. And when you come down, the same way. Three, five, one, and how are you gonna do? One, two, and five, and three, five. So try to remember, if you don't get it at the beginning, that's fine, it takes some time. So what you can do is just practice going up, right hand, you have to practice the left hand too, or left hand more. Why? Because we play it left hand chord more often than the right hand. Got it? So, the same thing. Left hand position is 3, 5, and 1. And here, at first, second inversion is 1, 2, and 5. So, opposite way. And 3, 5. And then, one, two, and five. And this time, three, five, and C. And go back to C. Got it? I think going up is okay. Always going down is hard, especially this one. Got it? So keep practice until you get comfortable. So if you see the first exercise, we we'll just count. One. As you play, you have to remember the chord names. Do you see the symbols? C, C slash E, C slash G, C again, and C slash G, so on. So remember that. Now let's move it on to the next chord. What about an F? F chord, yes, yeah, so start with F. And you do exactly the same as a C chord. It seems pretty hard, but it's actually easy. Now, what if I cover the black keys? They think, you know, it's like you play it on the C chord. Do you remember these two are the same? One, two, and then going fourth up. The same thing. Do you see? Yes, because the key is the distance, how many notes are within the chord. So you don't actually have to read each single note. Instead of reading the note, just you figured it out by the distance of the note. Got it? So let's see. F and one, two, and going up. So this is F chord, but bottom is in A. So F slash A. And the next one is three, five, and one. And how do we chord? F chord slash C, because bottom is on the C. And if we go up again, C, F chord, right? And if we come down, how do we do? Three, five, and one. Then, how do we do? One, two, and five. And coming down to F chord. Exactly the same as a C chord, right? Yeah. Just as you practice, 
memorize the position, actually the distance of the knot. And then you have to memorize the symbol too. Got it? What about on G? Exactly the same way. This time let's try it on the bass. So start on this G. And how do we do? Move G up here. So these two notes are stayed. And distance, right? So that's gonna be G chord at the bottom of the B. So G slash B. What about the next one? One, two, and then five. This is a G chord slash D, right? What about the next one? Root position. And then going down to skip and five. And how do we go? And then the next one is a G. Do we see? Yes. So once you know the pattern of the chord, then it's really easy. You don't have to read all the notes. Of course, it's better to read it too, but you can first figure it out by the distance of the note and the symbol of the chord. So you have to be able to play it as fast as possible. And able to play it. Got it? So you can maybe later on play it as fast as to play a really nice song. This time, we're going to play a song with this inversions. Look at this now. What is it? The first one is on a C chord, as you see it. And then what about the next chord? C again. And the following one is two and then fourth. So two and fourth. Oh, that's the second inversion. But C chord bottom and the E. So it's gonna be C slash E. Got it? And then coming down to C, root position. And bottom two is skip and fourth. So it's gonna be like this, the next one. And then the following one is, oh, top two are skip. So it's gonna be like this. And then bottom note is fourth. So it's a second inversion which is C slash G, because bottom note is on the G, right? And then coming down to C root position. The next one is bottom two are skip and top fourth. So C slash E. And the very last note of the first line is, yes, skip top and the bottom fourth. So it's second inversion. C chord slash G. Got it? So if you do only this first line, let's see how it goes. Find hand position on the C chord. Ready? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. Coming down to C. How was it? Is it really confusing? Yes, a little bit. But you can recognize the difference between the root position, first inversion, and then the second inversion, right? Do you see the difference? Yes, it comes. If you don't recognize right away, that's fine. Practice a little more. Now let's go back to the second line. Start on C root position again. And then the same thing. First inversion and top to our skip. So it's a second inversion and very well blocked. So it's a C. Next one is bottom two and top four. So it's first inversion, top two or skip. Second inversion, C slash E. And the next one is slash G and following one is C root position 
tap 2 and G, so C slash G, C slash E, and next one is root position. After that, now here, this is a different chord. What is it? Bottom two are the same, and top note is fourth. So this one is a something what? First inversions, right? Because bottom two are in the skip. We have to figure it out. What is the chord? Yes, then this alone note is the chord name. G chord. Why? Because if we move this G down, this is G chord. G chord first inversion. So this is G slash B. Got it? What about the next note? B, F, G. You have never seen this one before, right? Or we have seen it actually. Whenever it's two note like chopstick, then this is seventh note. And the top note is closer to chord names. If we move this G bottom here, G, B, B, F, G seventh note. Got it? So, G seventh chord, we leave it out D and move this G to up here. This is G seventh. And the very last note of the song is C, E, G. So C slash E, the first inversion. Got it? Now it's kind of okay, right? You just need some time to figure it out, the position, but you understand the concept of inversions, right? So now let's play a whole entire song in slow tempo. Find hand position on C. Ready? One, two, three, four. 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 Rest two. Have you ever heard this music before? Oh, play it. Academy to wake up soldiers or cadets. Now let's see how it goes. If you're looking at the right hand, mostly consists of C chord and its inversions, right? Yes. And the left hand is keep holding the C after you play it. So every eight beats you just repeat it again. So now let's see. One, two, Two. 
chord, the right hand, left hand comes to the G. Two. Two. Now it becomes a G chord, complete G chord. And right hand, C chord, and left hand. C again. Three. And then if you see in here, the left hand goes C. The skip, bottom to our skip, and then top is a G. Two. Yes. Now, actually, I wrote the song as exercise, so it's not as pretty as the previous one we have learned. But this is very important technique you should know to move it on to the next song. Now, when you practice this song, the Ravel, the key is moving up to very far from C to, if you see it here, jump into the second inversion. Now, from root to the first inversion is okay because it shares two notes, two same notes. But if we go to the second inversion, which is a C slash G, it's pretty far. The common note is only the top one, right? G. So what you can do is remember this G and go from G to four note above and then skip. So I guess that way you can find the note. So practice this one as fast as possible. And then you can later on just clean back again. And then sometimes it goes to the G. So there is a lot of important technique in this song you should master. How was today's lesson? Was it okay? Pretty hard. You understand all the concepts, but fingering doesn't follow if you don't practice. So you need to practice right in by yourself as well as the left hand. Try it. Exactly the same song you play it on the right hand, left hand. able to play it in inversions and you should recognize what kind of inversions it is and how to play it. I hope you enjoyed this practice and able to play it this inversion as well. And I'll see you next week. Bye!